you know, from this Ramadan to next Ramadan, how am I going to be a better Muslim? You do enough crimes, what happens? You start feeling, you stop feeling bad. You get desensitized. That nafsul lawwaba just becomes a nafsul ammara. It just tells you what to do and you don't think twice about what you have to do, just do it. You feel no guilt about it. You don't feel dirty inside, you don't feel regret. Not all of that remorse is gone. So the, the, the feeling of guilt, well, this is one of the, you know, all emotions that Allah Azza wa put inside the human being, fear, anger, anxiety, you know, guilt, all of these emotions, they have their place in making us healthy functioning human beings. Even the negative ones, they have a place. If there was no fear, we wouldn't fear the akhirah. This wouldn't be the case. If there was no sadness, we wouldn't feel the pain of other human beings. We wouldn't be merciful towards them because we can't feel sad. You know, we're not capable of it. Every negative emotion also has some benefit. But guilt is actually supposed to transform into something healthy. It's supposed to transform into something healthy. And let me explain how that works. You guys, you know, you, you take an exam. Two students take the same exam. One of them gets a 50, the other one gets a 50. They both fail the test. One of them is sitting in his desk crying. Tears coming down his eyes. He's so bad, mad at himself. He's feeling so guilty. How did I, why did I not study? Why did I waste my time? Why didn't I do my homework? Etc, etc. The other student gets a 50, sheds a tear, or wipes them, and comes over and says, Ustad, I need you to give me four more tests like this. I'm not going to stop until I get this right. I need to make this wrong right. They both feel guilty. But one takes his negative emotion and it paralyzes him. And the other takes his negative emotion and it d drives him to perfect himself, to better himself, to never make that mistake again. They're not the same. They're not the same. And Allah expects one as opposed to the other. Musa a.s. killed someone. That depression alone can kill you. Just the grief could kill you. But Musa a.s. understands that I have to learn from my mistake and move on with life. So what does he tell Allah? Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Any good thing you can send my way, I'll take it. And I'm, I'm so desperate now to do good deeds more than I've ever been before because I know there's a guilt behind me. And to compensate for that crime, I will go out of my way to take any opportunity to do good deeds. That's one of the meanings of that dua. You know? That's a nafsul lawama. The, the self that keeps on blaming, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? That conscience that keeps poking and pricking. And you know, feeling bad and feeling guilty is not a fun emotion. It's not a good emotion. It's not, it doesn't, it's not an enjoyable thing. So what do most people do? They bury their guilt. They compensate it. They rationalize their behavior. They say, no, no, no. Yes, I said something wrong, but you said it first. Or this happened first. Or it was because of this. And there's always a line of reasons to cover your guilt. But Allah Azza wa Jalla says, if you're true to yourself, then you will acknowledge the real guilt you have and do something right about it instead of covering it up. And then... Now, if, when those two things are there inside the human conscience, first of all, character, and second of all, the, the nafsul lawama, then understanding that a day is coming when all of our deeds will be brought before us, and all of that guilt that was poking us and saying, hey, you better do a good deed to compensate for this bad deed, so you don't get in really serious trouble one day, all of that that was happening inside of our souls, that'll all pan out. Then it makes total sense. But if someone has no guilt left inside of them, what akhira? What are you talking about, Yawm al Qiyamah? What, what judgment day? Ayahsabul insan Allah najma'a idama. Has the human being assumed that we're not going to be gathering his bones? Bala. No, no, on the contrary. Qadirin, we have completely been capable. Ala an bananahu. That we can put together and fashion and even out every single one of his fingertips. Forget, you know, when we die and, and our bones are decayed, rufatan wa idaman wa rufatan. The Quran says, the, the critics said that it's going to be turned into bones and decayed dirt. It's going to be crumbled. You try to pick up the bone, it'll just collapse. That's going to be an old, you know, a skeleton. We're going to be raised again. Allah says, down to your last fingertip. I'll, I'll put you back together. <laughs> However, the human being intends to continue to do whatever he wants in front of him. Fajara literally means explosion. Like infijar is explosion. Fajr is the explosion of light. Fajr time is the explosion of light. A fajr is someone who explodes, in other words, has no control over his whims. He just bursts into whatever behavior, whatever comes in his thought, comes out of his mouth. Whatever urge he has, he follows it. This is a fajr. Uncontrolled, outbursts. You know, that's the, 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 that kind of sinner is called a fajr. 
لِيَفْجُرَ أَمَامَهُ The human being just wants to do whatever whim he has, whatever, whatever, whatever impulse he has, he wants to follow it right in front of him immediately. Human beings are just impulsive. That's why they don't want to think about يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Because guilt makes you say, don't do this. We, just, we don't want to have that honest conversation. How many of us, you're driving by yourself, you just talk to Allah. You can talk in English, it's okay. One day in Arabic, inshallah. Talk in English, Ya Allah, I've done some pretty messed up things. You know. Spell them out. Spell them out until you cry. Allah, I want to change. I don't want to do that anymore. Help me change. I don't want to make excuses.